uh, it's been great. It's been like being on a drip of methylphenidate, which to say, I mean, it's so invigorating. There's so many ideas coming down the pike. I mean, I heard there, there were five or six different, there's always a narrative going on in my head, five or six different narratives, and they were, they were spurred by the conversation this morning. Oh, it's going really well. I mean, I just, I came in last night, so I missed the first reception, but the hotel is great. Um, the place is great. I like the weather, so. For me, the most powerful part of this discussion was when we were talking about the organizational structure in which scientists are housed and in which they are rewarded. And this idea of basic scientists versus problem solving applied scientists. Um, and I think we did a good job of outlining what that problem is and then we began to kind of talk around what needed to, be, to happen. We were saying, well, we need to change the organization. We need to have new rewards. Those rewards need to line up with what problem solvers want and need. We need to be ambitious and take risks. Those are such general terms. And when I heard that discussion, very clearly to me it said, this is the topic of the next conference. The next conference is sitting down at tables, having working groups, workshopping out what would that new organization look like? What would the new rewards be that would allow the problem-solving applied scientists and the basic scientists to coexist in the same organization, get credit where credit is due, promotion where promotion is due, and then actually achieve their goals? Well, I, I certainly think in this, this morning's panel, I mean, from my perspective, so I'm a, I'm a new faculty member and I'm in an interesting position as a faculty because I'm a, I'm a research faculty. I'm at the Maxwell School at Syracuse in a couple centers in the department, in a department, but I'm funded completely by soft money, more or less by choice, so that I can uh, help to figure out, I think, exactly some of these questions, or so I can figure out for myself, but also be a part of all of our efforts here to figure out some of these issues that were brought up this morning, specifically, um, how do you create alternative incentive structures? How do you create alternative research systems which promote collaborative research and you know how do we respond to these tensions of you want to you know you want to be the one the first author you want to be the one getting your name on the thing getting the credit so you can advance and and so you can uh, continue to explore those ideas at the same time you want to be part of a team and you want to you want that team to be successful and uh, I think these issues are incredibly important I think that it's what we need to figure out I'm excited to be here so that we can uh, just very much begin to kind of just identify the terrain. But I'm concerned also because uh, I'm concerned that it's really hard for new faculty to work in this context. What I'd like to see more of, I'd like to see a discussion of you know, people that are sort of putting their own careers on the line to say, you know, uh, I think it's important we figure out some of these new structural things. I'm willing to, to not perhaps pursue the traditional track that maybe was obvious to pursue 10, 20, 30 years ago. Uh, I'm pursuing a little bit of a different track. Maybe we could, we could have some conversations, some networking around how can we empower ourselves and each other to be successful uh, within a system that is also changing and that we're, we think should change. I'm, I'm here. Uh, the president of the University of Wyoming sent me down to this conference to be his ears and eyes because Wyoming is a state it's the largest coal producing state in the nation. It's the second largest, third largest wind producing state in the nation. And we are obviously having some issues, political scientific issues. Our two senators from the state of Wyoming are sort of obliged to protect the coal industry. That's part of their job. And so the president of the University of Wyoming sent me down to say, oh, what's going on in the scientific community? How can we segue scientific research into public policy? And there, there's a disconnect and <laughs> he just said, tell me what's going on. So that's why I'm here. It was interesting that none of the values themselves were able to be talked about. And so we get back to this whole idea of, is science an objective endeavor and can only be um, described in measurable quantities? And so it's sort of this, uh, I don't know, we get lost in this space of, uh, I don't know, subconscious ideologies where it's like, well, what are values and how do we define them? And is science totally divorced from that? And, well, I'm hoping that throughout this conference we'll be able to get closer to defining those boundaries and maybe how we can incorporate them into our actual scientific endeavors. So.